I think it is. Uh, I think it's important always to start from the positive. Um, so, you know, it's clear that we have a great value proposition in the digital world, and um, we have you know really smart people who are adaptable. Um, we adopt technology quickly, um, and clearly that's evidenced by you know some of the biggest global digital companies basing themselves here. Um, but to sustain that and also to grow our own digital industry, I think it is important that we put certain things in place. And for me, um, the building blocks of a digital economy are around infrastructure and skills. Um, when you see the impact that good infrastructure has on a, on a society, it really is quite extraordinary. Um, we, have, we have quite an advanced um, broadband rollout in Northern Ireland where we will be um, at 90% by March 2012 and, and we'll be delivering speeds of up to 80 megabyte download and 20 megabyte upload. And when you see what that does for businesses, um, just one small example, um, printforme.com, um, a small business based up on the northwest coast of um, Ireland um, who were doing printing for the, for the local um, community, a, a business that was under very severe pressure as you'd imagine. Um, and gradually over time, with access to high-speed broadband, they've been able to get suppliers to supply them from, um, from the Far East, which gave them a much lower cost point. But they've also started to take work, design work, really high-value design work from companies abroad and do it in Derry, which is quite incredible and is only made possible through the access to very high-speed broadband. I think we have a long way to go on that in the Republic of Ireland. There is, a, there is a plan being formulated. We participate in the Next Generation Broadband Task Force, but I think there is going to be some challenging decisions for us to make as a society on where we set our priorities on that. The key gap is the skills gap, um, and we do have a structural unemployment issue whereby the, all the employment that we've lost was through a construction and retail boom. Um, and the, the potential that exists in Ireland is all around math, science and technology. Um, there's a piece of that that needs to be addressed by taking people who are currently out of work and um, helping to reskill them for that new world. And there are some quite innovative programs in place. Are they getting the funding and attention they require? You know, I'm, I, I probably couldn't comment, but I don't see enough of that. Um, and the other piece is just encouraging our young people into um, those subjects because I think we have very good universities and there's a lot said about us not being in the top 100. I don't think that's as important as getting quality graduates or quality students in through the doors to complete those courses and come out the other end. And we've certainly seen from our involvement with the BT Young Scientist, which we organise every year, you know, a massive increase in interest from students, more projects than we ever had this year more interest than we ever had this year and also an increasing support from business so our business partners supporting us and wanting to be involved and engaged in the event because they know how important it is. It's a really interesting um, really interesting challenge for us as a, as a marketplace because um, if you think of small businesses it is hard out there there's no doubt about it the indigenous economy is in, um, in quite a lot of difficulties and you know we're all spending less money on everything and um, we're more prudent we we put off purchases and that really does hurt local businesses the key thing that the digital infrastructure delivers to your um, to, to those small businesses is a marketplace it's a global marketplace they can immediately look at what they do and rather than trying to sell it to the um, four and a half million people that we have in this country who are um, not in the best purchasing mind, you get to sell it to a, to a global marketplace. Um, and the other thing you get to do is you get to take on board services at much lower price points. So if you think about you know, the whole um, cloud computing um, discussion, I'm not a big supporter of the term cloud computing because I think it, it um, conveys to people that there may be something new and different that they have to do. It really is the same things you've been doing, you just buy them in a slightly different way. You pay for them based on when you use them and 
they're not sitting in your office or your data center anymore, they're just sitting somewhere else. But you can now buy those types of services at a much lower price point and they can be delivered from anywhere in the world. So you know, an, a fully enabled digital infrastructure for small business it means that they get access to a global market and they can um, be supplied by global suppliers. And that's, you know, you, you give that to any small business owner and they will take your arm off for it. We had a fascinating speech from um, David Putnam at the BT Young Scientists and Technology Gala Dinner um, where he talked about just that, how, um, how our people are educated and what kind of world are we educating them for. Um, and he was talking about us being somewhat smug about being the keyboard generation in that we're all very um, capable on keyboard, whereas in actual fact there is now no research and development going in anywhere in the world into new keyboard technology. Um, because the assumption is it's all going to be um, voice activated technology is going to be the, um, the, the, um, the tool of the future and made that exact point that um, coding becomes a crucial discipline for, um, for people to have in order to be able to interact with the world they need to understand how software works and how they will interact with that software and he was challenging a complete overhaul of the education system um, which I, I think that's potentially a very long-term vision and plan that we should consider. Um, however, there are some practical things that we can do today, um, just encouraging young people to participate and sign up for science and engineering and mathematics courses in university. Um, you know, I, I think just that encouragement is important. How we teach those subjects in the schools, another point that um, was made in that speech um, was that if you took a surgeon from a um, uh, hundred years ago and put them into an operating theater today, they would be virtually useless because technology has moved on so much in the application of medicine that they would be useless. If you took a teacher from a hundred years ago and put them in a classroom today, in a very short space of time, they would be probably quite effective and functional in teaching the subject that they that they learned. And I think that's. That's a really interesting challenge for our education system. So short-term things that we can do, but there is a long-term challenge that we do have to grasp. I think skills are, are critical and, and really, um, uh, really specialist technical skills are in very short supply, there's no doubt about it. Um, I think we do have, uh, we do have a, a short-term um, solution to that, which is the um, people coming to live in this country. Um, and we still have a, you know, I think we still have a very good standard of living here, good quality of life. Um, you know, I think people would probably feel that taxation is a challenge, um, and, and it is, but, you know, we still seem to be getting over that and still seem to um, be attracting young people from all over Europe to still come here and do those, do, do those technical jobs. But we really do need to um, move our young people from what would have been business and property courses into science, maths and technology courses. They are more challenging technically um, and I think how we teach them needs to, needs to improve. But we've seen, um, you know, just uh, when, when you engage people in, um, in science and technology in a way that's enjoyable and you show them the business potential. Um, and we, we recently put on the, the business of science and technology element to our BT Young Scientist program. And when you see what's come out of that, um, with you know genuine um, young people setting up genuine businesses, and um, we had one back at the um, RDS this year um, who had um, built a product out of um, seaweed extract as a as a health drink, and they'd taken it and they built a business and they were marketing it, and you can see all the things they learned in the business of science program being applied, and they brought it to their new project, and you know you see the successes that have come out of that. Patrick Collisine now. Uh, a Silicon Valley um, entrepreneur, the restored hearing, who have a, um, you know two two girls who started up their own business in university, successful company. So I think when you engage people, make it enjoyable, and show them the potential. I think that's what we need to do.